people who are best at slowing down are the ones who make the most progress consistently. And on a certain level, that's not surprising, I think. We know that you're supposed to look before you leap. and you know. But in the moment, actually being a person who says, I'm you know, this is a 90 minute soccer game and I'm playing this game. The whistle has just gone. And what should I do first? I should do nothing. No one does that. The only person who seems to do that is Lionel Messi, who's the best soccer player in the world right now. And so I talk about him and his, how he has used this kind of slowing down process in the first few minutes of the game to improve the other 85 plus minutes of the game. But no one can do that except Messi. If you trace the, the path of each soccer player on the field, on every field in the world, Everyone but Messi is running around like a headless chicken from the minute the whistle goes off. You know, they really are moving around a huge amount. Messi ambles around. Often he doesn't even move. There are sometimes cameras that that sit on him because he's interesting to look at. And he's just standing there with his legs kind of apart, just standing there, just kind of looking at the game. And it's totally fascinating. And again, this idea that the the people who make the most progress are often the people doing the least, I, I find that totally fascinating. So I, I was fortunate or unfortunate enough to see one of Messi's last games in Paris. And it was incredibly oh, wow. boring as a spectator. You know, you're so excited to <laughs> yeah. see him perform. And yet here he is like barely moving on the pitch. And he's earned that right. Yeah. Right. Because of his skill level, his feats, he's legendary. One of the best ever. But many professional soccer players, their coaches would pull him off the field in the first 10 minutes if they did what he was doing. So there is that not only internal, I have to rush through this, I have to move fast, everyone else around me is moving fast, I have to move fast and break things. And then there is that external force too that's like, well, you should be moving fast, I'm your boss, you need to be working harder, you need to be more productive. So the internal and external are both pressuring us to move faster, yet counterintuitively we need to slow down to have the breakthrough. What can we do to manage both of those pressures that we're feeling in those moments? Yeah, that's an excellent point. I think the messy example is one that I put in the book because I just find it so fascinating. And because whenever you find a person who is as skilled as he is doing something that no one else is doing, that's worth paying attention to. That doesn't mean we can all stand on the soccer field and do nothing. As a soccer player or as a former soccer player, I could never have got away with that. I'm not messy. But I think the principle is is useful that... um, This idea of slowing down, even if it's a private experience, you know, and a lot of stuckness is very private and lonely and isolating. In those moments, you should slow down too. You don't have to be on the soccer field to do it. The other thing I think that the book is about and that uh, that example is about is about leadership because the story begins with one of Messi's coaches. He is from Diego Maradona, another Argentinian giant who many say is the best of all time among the top few. Maradona saw Messi and said, this guy's never going to succeed. He's too nervous. He's not going to be great. And I thought that was fascinating. And it took a coach to say, actually, you're wrong, Diego. You may be a giant of the game, but you're wrong because he's great and he's got incredible talent and we just have to figure out a way to deal with his nerves. And so this coach basically came in as the leader and said, Lionel, I want you to get on the field, but do nothing for three minutes and see how that makes you feel and see if that calms you down. And instead, survey the territory, look at the landscape. So a lot of the book is about leadership and it's about how to be the right kind of person who who has people in your charge and can guide them in a way that will bring out the best from them. And part of that is, is licensing people to A, fail, and B, to slow down. So inside of that, it sounds a lot of this breakthrough is happening behind the scenes. So maybe at work, when all that pressure is on, you can't really slow down. But then in the off time, taking a weekend or maybe taking a vacation, creating that space in your life to slow down outside of those moments creates that opportunity for your mind to catch up with everything else that's going on around it. Yeah, I think that's right. I think when you have uh, discretion over you, when you have um, discretionary time, you know, time that you can spend the way you'd like to, slowing down is very valuable. If at work, it's not it's not feasible that you're going to slow down and so be it. You may be one of those people who's lucky enough to have a manager or a boss, or you may be a manager or a boss who has the chance to license that slowing down in the people around you. And I think that's, that's part of the message as well, that a lot of this change happens from the top. And so a lot of the people who've read the book or that I've heard from have been these kinds of people who say, how do I assemble a team for unsticking and breakthroughs? What should I do to maximize the likelihood that this team does actually stumble on a breakthrough? And then one of the messages is let them fail and let them do it slowly. 